I say net neutrality and you say what? Literally what? You're probably saying what is net neutrality? As Kate Flexter explains, yes, it deals with the internet, but it also deals with the haves and have-nots, the rich and the poor, and yes, some would argue social justice. Kate. Thanks, Alan. This is something that affects anyone who uses the internet, whether it's for business or just to surf the web. So in this day and age, it's an issue that will impact millions of Americans. For Sarasota web designer Kyle Nickel, the internet is the great equalizer, a chance for small businesses to become big businesses based solely on a good idea. But if you have a great product or a great service that you want to get in front of somebody and you do the right things on the internet, you can get discovered and, and become the next great, great company. But now Nickel feels that opportunity could be threatened as the head of the Federal Communications Commission reveals a plan to roll back Obama-era net neutrality rules on equal access. I, I'm totally against it because it just, it's going to make it really, it's going to stifle small business growth. It's a move that's facing stiff resistance, including from HBO's John Oliver, who's urging viewers to speak out. A call to action that could be responsible for a recent surge from 30,000 comments on the FCC's website to more than 1.6 million. So what is net neutrality? It's a big word for a simple idea that Internet service providers like Comcast, AT&T and Verizon, which control your pipeline to the Internet, cannot pick and choose favorites in terms of the content Content that you consume. If that were to go away, Nickel uses the analogy of a highway. This would allow providers to set different speed limits for different drivers depending upon how much you're willing to pay, affecting those surfing the web as well as those who run internet based companies. Critics argue it would give favoritism to larger companies with deeper pockets. Nickel's concern. 80% of his customers are small businesses. It's going to make it really a lot harder for small businesses to start up and get discovered. So from my perspective, it's really uh, it's bad for business. But president of Sarasota's Republican Club, Rod Thompson, says it's not the government's place to interfere. I think that the Internet is maybe the greatest thing that's happened to free expression since the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. And for the government to start in any way regulating that is a disastrously bad idea. Internet service providers are privately owned companies, and Thompson says they should be treated as such. Internet service providers are private entities that are providing it. So a better analogy is more like that of a Maserati manufacturer who would be required to make sure that his car doesn't go any faster than a Prius. Researcher and instructor at the University of South Florida, Alyssa Klein, specializes in inequality and poverty. She says doing away with net neutrality won't just impact businesses, it will also impact individuals, especially those on the lower end of the economic scale. When you're talking about differential pricing of a product that's become as important as um, internet access and access to specific things on the internet, it's not that hard to understand understand why those who have the least money would be the most seriously impacted by it. The Internet's not just home to funny YouTube videos, social media, or the answers to your strangest questions. It's also a tool that has become a necessity in the educational and professional world. To Klein's point, charging more for Internet speed will make it harder for the lower class to access that crucial tool. If, say, you need Internet access to look for a job, any number of other things, as that becomes harder to come by, it makes it harder to do those things that could make you upwardly mobile. Plus, Klein says it may play a larger role in rural areas where Internet provider options are limited. When we think of people with low socioeconomic status, too, often people jump right to cities. But really, if in this particular case, we should also think about the rural poor because they have even fewer choices in Internet service providers. It's an issue that crosses party lines and affects nearly every single American. For now, the question is what rules, if any, will govern the tool we've come to rely on? The FCC just opened a three-month window for public comment. Kate, thank you.